against Are the powerful. Are you supporting the baby after the mother gives birth and she can't even I afford a four hundred dollar abortion? I a baby costs think. more than four hundred dollars. Allow, allow me to allow me to address that. I, I, I'm amazed that you've just qualified human life to being four hundred dollars. That's amazing. Well, what, happens, what happens if society decides yeah. that hipsters are not people? You know, or black people are not people, or then Jews again, are not people. Then again, they're wrong. Why are they wrong? Because you just said we make it up. What yeah. ground? On yes. what grounds are they wrong? Have you ever encountered a code that does not have a code giver? Oh, of course I haven't, because a code is something which an intelligent person makes up. So of course you've got the answer in the question. Well done, but it gets you nowhere. The fact of the utility of the scientific method yes. is contained within a prism. It only works within physical constructs. It cannot be used as an argument mm. for mm. or against, strongly, the existence mm. of God. No problem, he doesn't want it, he's got to do it. You yeah, want it to do it? Well, you're just talking, you're just spousing this Christianity stuff. Yeah, and? We've got rid of all of that stuff, we've progressed no, we haven't. further. No, no, we haven't. What, where's the progress? Where's the progress? Well, firstly, let's, you, you made two points. You said yeah. we've got rid of all that stuff. So one of, one of my main Who, things. Who's, first, no, 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 you've made a point. Firstly, tell me yeah. who's we, yeah. what's your evidence that it's been got rid of this point? Okay, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> basically the atheist community, yeah? We've worked out there's, there's no evidence for this God you talk of, and most of the stuff is all just contradictory. If you want to look for a moral grounding, don't look towards the Bible. It's just a mess, especially the Old Testament. Butchering here, butchering there, kill a whole town, kill the pigs and goats and camels. It's just nonsense. We, we can become higher than this. You've read Sam Howe, The Moral Landscape. We should look at suffering and sort of how to alleviate it. It's going to be a branch of science of how to... Uh, conduct ourselves in a moral manner. Right, so the we that you talked about is the atheist community. Yeah. So you're not speaking, obviously, for society as a whole. Well, and they've got to the, catch no, up. No, no, they've got no, to catch up. Yeah, we, we, we know the arrogance of the new atheist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, right here. So the, a the new atheist says we, and I don't know if you've ever noticed that the likes of Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, they talk as if they're talking down to everyone else. Yeah. Just well, as you've seen here. Rise you've up. just seen here. Yeah, we're asking now, you to rise up. Let's, let's actually look at a worldview that doesn't have a God. Yes. A worldview that doesn't have a God. Let's examine that for a second. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. In a world that doesn't have a God, yeah, how do we decide what is right and wrong? We look at what causes suffering and we, we work out what alleviates suffering and we can look at it through a neurological perspective. We can look at brain patterns and things like this. We can look at it as a branch of health. We can say, do you want to be free? Or oh, I'll leave it there. Do you want okay. to be free? Do you want so to be his healthy? argument is, ladies and gentlemen, that in a world without God, we just look at suffering. Okay, that's his argument. But the thing is, his opinion is one of many and multiple opinions. What about the utilitarian ethic, the one that creates the uh, greatest possible happiness? What about the Kantian moral imperative, which is only do that which, which, is, which is only do that which is applicable to all people at all times? What about the Nietzschean ethic of the Ubermensch? These are all atheistic worldviews and they all posit different moral systems about who decides, about how to decide what is right and what is wrong. And how does the atheist, how do you as an atheist, how do you as an atheist judge between your reduction of suffering ethic, yeah. the utilitarian ethic, the Nietzschean Ubermensch, the Kantian moral imperative? How do you decide which of these four, which are all atheistic mm. perspectives, mm. how do you decide which of these four you want to live by? Uh, well, like I said, I think I would go with the, the first two then, the but, utilitarian. Oh, it's and two the, now, not Yeah, one. yeah, because you're, you're sort of merging these two. The utilitarian is speaking to the um, alleviation of suffering. So the so like alleviation said, of uh, suffering the alleviation leads of to suffering happiness. It's sort of like a health question. It, it's like you said, there could be many different perspectives on how to live healthily or how to live morally. But eventually we're going to work out that it's wrong to sort of beat up children and stuff like this. It just creates too much suffering. So it's going to be wrong. We can have even very simple law rules. Like the golden rules, all right, do unto others you want to do to other people. So then in a logical framework, we can run the system and be like, look, 
you, it's, it's contradictory to say, oh, we treat this person badly because uh, that person is not me. But who defines what a person is? Uh, well, they, come on, that's just simple. You just say, oh, look, that's is a it, person over Is there. an unborn child a person? Unborn child, bloody hell, well, you're going straight for the abortion <laughs> idea. <laughs> <I didn't laughs> <say anything>. <laughs> <laughs> So who decides who's a person? No, I'm saying you're going straight for the abortion. No, answer my question. Who decides who's a person? And we all do. We make it up. We make it up. Yes. Right, so we make it up. So what happens if we go back to 1945, 1932, 1932, 45 Nazi Germany, when we want to go there. gypsies and Jews were categorized as non-people? Yeah. You just said we make it up. So, so can I just why can't? So one do you second. think your God defends against one this second. behavior? One do you second. think your God one defends? No, I'm one asking him a question. Do you, I, 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 one do, you, do you believe your one God defends second. against that? Do you believe your God defends that? One second. One second. Because you're barracking. Do you? Do you? One second. Do you? Um, wait, well, the question is. If you're saying we just make it up, that's what yes, you said. I did say. So what We're happens? What record. happens if society decides yeah. that hipsters are not people, you know, or black people are not people, or then Jews are not people? Then they're getting it wrong. Why are they wrong? Because you just said we make it up. What yeah. yes. On what grounds are they wrong? Yeah. If we just that, make that it, it up, it produces suffering and an inc in contradiction. But a person is a person, so they're just finding Hold a on. false answer. You, but they're here's, finding a false here's answer. the logic. That's what I mean. They're right. wrong. So here's the logic of your argument, because your argument is said. Where am I? We Where should. Am I? I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain. You're doing okay. Thank you. You, 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 you've <laughs> just said. You've just said. <laughs> the moral principle that we should use is that we should reduce suffering so that persons do not suffer. Yes. And then I said, how do we define a person? And yeah. then you said, we just make it up. Yes. And then I said, well, what happens if society decides to make up that black people aren't persons or that Jews aren't persons? And yeah. then you just said, well, that's evidently wrong. How okay. can it be evidently wrong okay. if you've just said that society has the permission okay. to make it up? Very good. What I could jump in. objective yeah. standard yeah, are you on, using Bob. to define the person? Yeah, well done. So he needs an applause for that one. Okay. Go on then. Because I could say, do we make up the number of the speed of light or do we discover it? We could do the same thing with these moral questions. We discover what is the moral answer based on what causes suffering. So they got it wrong in Germany. They thought they were not people, but they are people. So it's, it's they discovered the wrong answer so, or they made up the wrong answer. Right, guys, I think, I, I think, I think, I think the word for this is drowning. Um, so his argument now is that we will discover we will discover something that is a metaphysical question. No, let no, us be no, clear. No, no, no. <laughs> let us be clear. Did not say that. Did let not say that. No, no, you no, did. No, you no, just don't clear. understand no. what metaphysics is. No, don't understand what metaphysics. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what metaphysics is. So let's no, no, be clear. I'm going back to my thing. You've let, hijacked let, it. Do you believe that God defends against the Nazi Germany regime? Yes. You think it does? Yes. What, how did this God communicate with you? So let, let me answer. No, yeah, go on. Okay, answer the question. To, how did the God communicate? You've asked two questions. What are the two questions? One. Does my God defend against that yep. kind of thing? And two, how does he communicate? Yes. I will address both questions. Go for it. Go. Okay. And I've got to say, he does better than the Dawah team because yeah. at, least, yeah. at, least, at least he will tackle a question if I ask him, yeah. even if he is talking gibberish. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> let, let, he does it with one, takes it the other. Let, let, oh, let's just let's go. Let's go. Let, let, let's, let's, yeah. so, let's, so let's just, let's <laughs> just, let's just look at the first question. How does the Christian faith Tell argue against? Tell the camera and I'll against? watch the video. I gotta go. Oh, he's running oh, away. Oh, oh. Why are you running? Camera, Why are you running? running? Why are you running? You, running? you were so eager to heckle and debate me, now he's running away. Okay, so I'll answer the question and then maybe we'll take questions or pause. So, in answer to the question, how does the Christian faith argue against uh, the kind of abuses that we see under Nazism? Considering the fact that church history does have its abuses, it comes from the narrative that Everyone is made in the image of God. Every human being is made in the image of God, irrespective of any other factor. It doesn't matter what your religion is, you're made in the image of God. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, you're made in the image of God. It doesn't matter what your gender is, you're made in the image of God. It doesn't matter what class you're born into, you're made in the image of God. And that image is what bestows upon you dignity. Now you can denigrate that dignity by other things, by taking on false beliefs. You can denigrate that dignity by, by, by self-abuse, but that dignity is given to you from your conception. Now, in answer to how does God speak to us? God has spoke to us in the past through his prophets and their accounts are recorded in what we call the Old Testament. And he has spoken in these latter days through the word of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
whose accounts we find in the Apostles' teaching, which were written down in the Gospels and the letters. That church tradition is the basis of our belief, and we believe as Christians, that God's Holy Spirit dwells within his church and is guiding it to all truth. That doesn't mean that you've got an audio voice telling you what socks to pick in the morning, but what it means is that the Holy Spirit is guiding us and church tradition, of which the best exemplar is the scriptures, um, is guiding us to conform to the image of the Father's Son so that, so that we might be made perfect yeah, do you want an in, on this? in God. Go on. Okay, fine. Right, first of all, you were arguing with the, the other chap about atheism and where he got his morals from. And he didn't make a very good job of it, I admit that. Uh, but I think, first of all, his case could be improved. And then I'll go on to what you've said, if you, if you like it like that. Do you uh, want to take up his argument? Yeah, I'll take up his argument. So where do we get morals from in a world without God? We get our morals from looking around and deciding what would be in the best interest of people. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if you do have a God, Okay. And that God is crazy, which quite a lot of them like are. Allah, like Allah. Yeah, like yeah. Allah. Like yeah, Allah. Fine, fine. <laughs> or certain, he's, he's of, mad as yeah, certain of the uh, Amerindian gods, for example. You, you cut out the uh, the heart big and hold it up in the air because that stops the universe from, from stopping. And this was a god, and they believed it, and so they did what the god said, and the result was millions of people were sacrificed. So having a god is a very risky business. You'd better get the right one. You better get a good one. Totally agree. Yeah, On the, that it's not agree. as bad if you are, if you haven't got a god at all, because then you look around and you can look for the the evidence of your own senses. You know, are these people in distress? Is there warfare? Couldn't we bring that down May a I bit? Reply? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Please, please. So you said that what we need to do is look around <laughs> yeah. and defy, decide what is the the thing that would reduce suffering for yeah. persons. Sure. Yeah. So. How do we decide what is a person? Well, is this the question? Are you talking about whether animals are persons or whether fetuses are persons? I'm just asking, or? as an atheist, well, how do you, how do you, there are, there, right, are, okay. there are national socialists who would yeah. say that my Christian brother here is yes. not a person. That's right, yes. Well, he is not yes, a person. Yes, that, that, yes okay. How yes. do you argue against that as an atheist? <laughs> well, I would argue against that by saying that the way we describe personhood yeah. is in terms of, for example, what that person show what well, that creature let, let's say creature <laughs> that creature shows in terms of response to stimuli can it does it feel pain can it do things like like we can like talk to us and argue with us now if we took our friend here i'm sure he would pass those tests wonderfully okay so we'd say yeah he's a person so, and so you're saying wrong. that we define a person by what response to stimuli yeah so are you saying that a handicapped person someone who's in a state of paralysis and in a yeah. coma is not a person no because even in a coma well, they are a person in a, in, in, but they can't respond to stimuli no well they do can't respond to stimuli i mean if you give them an electric shock they jump uh, there would be things that they so would the corpses. Uh, if you give an electric shock to a corpse, it will respond. It will under certain circumstances. If you leave it for a week, it doesn't work yeah, anymore. Yeah, but leave the yeah. guy in the cold for a week, he still does it. So that would that would be a way of testing between the two. So you're saying that your so your your definition of a person is that which responds to stimuli. No. Uh, so you're saying that a corpse no. within an hour of death is still a person. Uh, it would actually be before because you're right. Rigor mortis sets in and then it won't. It would be but quite if it arguable. can respond to stimuli, a dead person, a, a dead body, for an hour after death is still a person by your. I, I would be prepared to go that far because quite a few times they have put people in the morgue and said he's dead, and then he found out he wasn't. So. But that's non-dead people. Yeah, I'm but talking being about someone prepared, who's dead. Yeah, but we have got to set a, a, a system for doing this, for uh, application. We're human, to get it wrong. I'd rather err on the right. side of having the guy does, who really does, is dead does, counted as not dead rather so, than so vice versa. So your, your, your logic, I would say, is irrational because oh, within okay. your definition of a person, yeah. we have dead people. And, and, and no. the fact is they're no, no. dead and... Well, how do we know they're dead? Well, because, because they're dead. They're oh, I see, we know they're dead because they're dead. dead. Now that is good. But He's criticising my logic. He says because, they're dead because they're dead. Because their brain is dead, their heart has stopped, but they will still respond yeah. to stimuli, which is yeah. your yeah. logic yeah. of yeah. defining yeah. a person. Now, let me ask you this question. Have got but do, does that mean by your logic right. that a fertilised egg is a person? 
Uh, a fer no, a fertilised egg. They're not egg. A, a person. No, I don't think that. A, a zygote. You mean just at the time of fertilisation? Immediately after conception. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's so they're not persons. They're not a person, but they are a potential. Why person. are they not persons? They they do respond to stimuli still. Well, yes, but you see, when I started to explain this, and I gave this as one egg, one of the tests, you cut in and assumed that that was all the tests. It has to fulfil more than that okay, in so order to be a person. More than that. Yeah. Okay. So this is doing this, so and it is also potentially what, what, a person. What so again, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, like I will with the person who somebody else has said he's dead, but quite often we find out isn't dead. Are animals persons then, by your logic? Uh, the vegans would certainly say yes. I'm not asking vegans. No, I'm no, asking I you. know, I know. I would say that they're not persons. They're not but persons, because but they respond to stimuli. That's right, and I've said that that is one of the tests, but not all so of them. So give me, give me a characteristic that a human has that a primate doesn't. Uh, human, right. human, they sing dogs. opera, for example. What? Singing what? opera. I've never heard an ape singing opera. I've definitely heard apes singing. Really? really? Yeah. Yo, you're they making a calls. noise. They, they, they're making make, a noise in well, the trees. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't an alien looking at human beings who doesn't know what opera is go, they're just making noise? Well, you know, this is, if your argument depends upon what an alien would think, uh, not that we know there are there any aliens, if they saw somebody else making a noise, I think you, we're right down I, the I, bottom I, there, I, 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 But right what I'm saying bottom. to you, what I'm saying to you is, opera uh, is essentially just humans making noises. No, it isn't. Apes no, wrong. making noises. <laughs> wrong. I think if you talk to somebody who knew something about opera, they would say it was a very particular sort of noise. It is a particular sort of so noise. So it's a mating call. Yes, but it, you might find, noise, if you went noise. into this, that the opera was a bit more complicated so, so than the you're, mating you're, you're, call. So I, I think that it seems to me that your yeah. your decisions about what makes a person is arbitrary. No, 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 no. Yeah, it is, because, no. because I can show you many of the characteristics that a primate has that a human shares. Yes, certainly it does. Yes. Huge, in fact, a, a, a vast, them, including, yeah. including cognition and reasoning. Um, and, and so uh, a primate, by, by these arbitrary standards, I could include, um, I could inc certainly include apes as persons. Oh, and there are people who want to do this. But it's the, a tricky question. But you've asked me where I we also answer. include corpses yeah. after yeah. an hour of death. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we know that sometimes they get up exclude, and are not dead at all. We exclude conceived human beings in that's, the womb. That's right, yes. But they yeah. also respond to stimuli. That's right, yes, of course they do. Because, I, I'll say this again because I think you missed it. You used to ask me what criteria yeah. would decide. And so I started naming criteria. It's okay, a complicated question yep. and I can't answer it by one characteristic. Fair so enough. I gave one characteristic and you jumped on that and you assumed that was the only characteristic and therefore anything with that characteristic I should and then I, say and then was I also, uh, But then I also creature. brought in the, the example of a primate because a yes. primate shares huge numbers of characteristics with human beings. That's right. Uh, he does, but not all of them. You agree? Such as? Well, so, such as, for example, one of the problems that these people have who want to, the Great Ape Project it's called, I don't know if you know about this, and that is to give human rights to, to chimps. I've heard about them. And things yeah. like that, that's right. One of the problems is, do you give responsibility, what about the responsibility, supposing that a chimp kills another chimp, and they do. Mm. So then do we haul the chimp off and have him executed or put in jail for 50 years? Because that's what we would do if we said they were equal exactly to humans. Right. So we don't do that, and some people have tried to get out of this by saying, well, let's consider them like mentally subnormal humans. Let, let's advance the discussion, because yes, sure. I think we can get bogged down in this definition. Yeah, yeah, but, okay, yeah. but here's one of the reasons why I reject yeah. the, the, this kind of reasoning, because it's yeah. so arbitrary. It's so arbitrary. Because um, both national socialists and communists gave a different answer to the question, what counts as a person? But look, did people give different answers to all sorts of things? We have a flat earth society here, exactly. they give a different answer to what exactly. the earth is. So, but that doesn't mean that so, we're, this is a problem. So one second, so, so, so what we have, what we need therefore in this disagreement mm -hmm. is something outside of our arbitrary reasoning that we can look to and then make a decision. Would you not agree? No, that doesn't work at all. It doesn't? If, no, because if you try that, then you, being a Christian, would go to the Christian God. Correct. The Muslim, being a Muslim, would go to the Islamic God. Yes. They would disagree with each other. Yes. So you're no near a, a solution can I, before you... Can I ask a question? Yeah. What's the... Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what's, the, what's the problem with defining a person as a human being? Every human being is a person. And that's the only criteria. And the only and, and you asked as an atheist, what would be my level of judging what's right and what's wrong? And you can say, well, compassion. I ought to treat every human being, every person, you can extend that to animals as well, with compassion, which means not to not, if it comes with the suffering, it's the at least not to cause of the suffering, which then that pretty much covers all aspects of violence, of treating someone 
with disrespect on all levels, which covers from, you know, not the letting the them reason, on the tube first the reason, to the reason, a genocide, the reason, if we want to talk about the Nazis. The, the, the reason why I, I reject this reasoning is because it's so arbitrary. It's not arbitrary. It is arbitrary. It's Hold on it's one second. Uh, it's allow it's me to reply, because you, you've essentially said all persons are humans or, or treating or humans all humans are persons. persons. Okay. Right, but, but, but How is that I wrong? would say, well, I, I, I would test that because I find that people who make that argument are the first to say that conceived eggs are not persons. The who? Conceived human eggs I'm are not persons. Choice. Yes. Yeah, I'm exactly. So you don't consider a conceived human being well, a human being? I consider a woman a human being, and I conceive a, a woman that can have the choice right, what so to do with her body and not be seen as an incubator so and have a choice exactly. of whether or not she so wants to So it is to, an arbitrary on, choice. It's not an so arbitrary choice. So if someone comes choice. along and says, it's not, it's like you someone decide. comes along and says Jews are not persons, or black people, like the, or black people I'm a Jewish that, 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 is, that is an arbitrary choice. I don't but see any difference in your logic and their logic. And they well, both incidentally lead saying, to mass if murder. Saying, well, let's, if we're if we want to take that into pro choice or, or pro life or whatever, when you tell a woman what to do with her body, that's A, taking away her self anatomy because you are telling her what to do with her body. I don't agree with her body. No, exactly. He's going to say it's God's body. It's God's body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're telling her, you're telling her, that's you're telling me, too. let's say I get. Let's say I, I don't I get pregnant maybe I don't want to have let's say I was like a woman not me let's say a woman was that's instances a woman was raped a woman it was uh, um, how do you say the word in English um, in, uh, incest 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 yeah yeah all those and and there are I don't certain religious streams that would say no like they're twelve year old and say no you still need to have that baby yeah. how is that compassion how does that how does that I cannot understand how a Christian, let's say, or a Jew, or whoever takes on a religion that says they're uncompassionate towards other people, can say to a 12-year-old that was raised by her father, well, you still need to have that baby because it's not your body. Or how can you say, even just a normal woman, just 30-year-old woman got pregnant, she doesn't want the so baby. Allow me to, allow just, me to just, 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 so just the end of this argument. Doesn't want to have the baby, but you still said that you need to put yourself in a life-risking situation, even if the, even if the pregnancy is completely normal, it can still end in death, and it's not just that. It's their psychological, emotional, financial yep. Yep. applications to having a baby. It's not just carrying it for nine months. It's taking care of it for the rest of its life. So, so in, in, allow me to address that point. Firstly, your 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 reasoning is wholly arbitrary. You're saying, you're assuming that your body belongs to you. You're making that assertion. I disagree. I don't believe that your body belongs to you. I don't believe that my body belongs to me, and I don't believe that you have any rights over an embryo to dictate what happens to that embryo. So why does that because embryo, why second, is that embryo more second, important I allow, than me? I allow you to talk, allow me to talk. Yeah. I don't I think that you have the right to assert because your rights over the rights of another. And that includes the embryo inside you. Now, in terms of your arbitrary markers, you're saying that I'm a person. Supposedly arbitrary. You're, you're, yeah, well, they are arbitrary. Supposedly. They, they are, definitely. That's your argument. Yeah. Okay. They are arbitrary. There's no other way. You, uh, I, I, I mean, an honest well, atheist well, would well. accept that they are arbitrary. They're just sure, opinion. They're, they're, an honest atheist would accept they're making arbitrary decisions. So in terms of in terms of talking about the, the, the rights of the mother, you've also got to consider the rights of the child. And those two rights have to be held in balance. But you're not have holding them in balance. In balance. I'm, a, I'm an attorney. I went to law school. It doesn't and mean I anything. Can, no, I, I'll tell you something. Well, not in this country, but I'll tell you something. There is, there yeah, is, there is the, well, look to me. Thank you very much. So when the Nazis, is, sorry, sorry, you just said, is, you, hold on, hold on. You just wait, said wait, law wait, equals morality. That's what you just no, said. No, I did not. Look, you didn't. No, no, I did not I say that. Did you not say that? No, 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 no I did not say that. I want to say in law school, okay. we've discussed, you know, constitutional rights and the one person's right towards another person's right. And you can say that, you can see that, let's say in the US with the Second Amendment, with the First Amendment, no, this is my right to carry gun. This is my right of speech. What they teach in law school is that no right has, ha, no right is unlimitless. No right is unlimitless. Yeah. So you're poor. Let's say if I let's say I agree. Let's say okay. Let's take on your. So your argument. rights over your body are yeah. not limitless. And the and your argument that the embryo has rights yes. over me are not limitless as well. But you're putting their rights 100% over mine. But you're also but you that. also need the, so. But that's not that. How is that different from what you're no, supposedly no, seeing me no, doing? No. Because because <laughs> in a situation where right? you have. When in a situation where you have the powerful holding life over the weak, then, as a Christian, 
I stand up for the weak against Are the powerful. Are you supporting the baby after the mother gives birth and she can't even I afford a four hundred dollar abortion? Defin I a baby think. costs more than four hundred dollars. Allow me to allow me to address that. I, I, I'm amazed that you've just qualified human life to being four hundred dollars. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that. very yeah, dangerous that, thinking that's okay. indeed. That's what the procedure very cost. Dangerous. I did not do that. Yeah. But very that's dangerous. Okay. Very well, dangerous you're kind of taking words so out of my you, mouth. So, but, so okay. you said because it costs more to look after a baby than it does to abort a baby. So you gave a value to human life. No, Ooh. I and that is the danger. I did not do that. No, no, no. I did not do that. I did not do that. Wait, wait. No, I don't. I'm not going to hold off. If you're going to you take come my back. word, you wait, wait. No, I'm going to come back right now because I'm not. I'm what I'm saying. You're taking my word. I'm not going to have a discussion with you if you're not. If you're not going to respect me now. No, I'm not going to continue with the result. No, I'm going to say it now because you just said something very, very severe. That's not what I said. I said a woman. No, I'm going to correct it right now because you're going to go off on a premise. You're going off of a premise. No, I was making a separate point actually. Well, then let me let me end this point. I'm not putting a I'm not putting value. I'm not putting value in human life, but I am saying if a woman can't afford yeah four hundred dollar procedure how much does it cost to raise a baby so you are placing a value no, on human but it costs a baby it costs to raise a baby so, so what you're saying is it costs money so what you're saying is it's money. cheaper to kill the baby than to raise the baby that's what you're saying yeah. okay yeah okay is it, yeah, exactly. is it a good life for the baby if the mother can't afford to feed it so the separate point that i was going to make before you interrupted is that because i hold to the belief that uh, you shouldn't have the right to abort a child, then of color, co uh, flowing from that point, I also, believe, I also believe, I also believe, I also believe, I also believe that society owes it to such mothers to support them. You I, can visit women go, oh, la di da, I'll have an abortion today. I would, like, I would, do you really I think a woman, do you really think a woman, I'm not against really what you're woman? saying at all, but I have to ask to this question. Man, time, time, I just guys. have to ask you this as question though. Oh, 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 I'm not walking away, I'm letting other people no, speak. No, actually, it might tie in with what you're saying. I just wanted to ask one question. I'm not against either one of you. I just wanted to know, is there actually a law in the Bible by God which says abortion is forbidden? It comes, the, 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 the way that the Christian, it is a good question and it's a fair question. The way that Christian reasoning works is this. We, we start with Jesus and Jesus' dignity as the Son of God happened at his conception. Which is why Christians believe that life begins at conception. That's where our logic flows out of. Because the dignity that Christ, when he, the Logos, becomes a man, that dignity he then bestows on the entirety of humanity so that all human beings have dignity from their conception. So that's where, that's where we're getting our, our Can rationale. Can I come back to what I think is the fundamental flaw in all this? I think that you have this idea that, okay, if you want to settle one of these moral questions and you go, say, to the atheists, the atheists will come up with all sorts of different ideas and you don't yeah, get anywhere. Whereas, if you go to religion, if you go to God, then no problem, it's all solved. Now, the problem with this is, first of all, working out which god it is, as I've said before, and those gods disagree with each other as ferociously as various atheists do. Some of the things that the, uh, the atheists might do, which might be wicked, such as, for example, the Nazis wiping out the Jews, are delightfully balanced by some of the things that appear in the Old Testament, such as massacring all the Amalekites. Uh, you might say the Jews are worse because there were more Jews killed, but then there were more people around by the 20th century. But it's the same problem you've got. You've got no more foundation than the atheists have got. It does come down. Within Christianity, there are people such as yourself who say it is crystal clear that we do not have abortion. And there are others who see equally crystal clear that you do. It's absolutely useless for settling anything. Okay, so allow me to address that point. Sure, yes. yes so I, I am not saying that there are disagreements between religions or even within the same religion. What I am saying is that within a, the Christian faith, we are offered an objective narrative that we can get involved in that gives us a common language to work out these questions. And then because we're working from a common narrative, because we're working from a common language, we can decipher these questions within a moral paradigm that is given to us. In an atheist worldview, all moral paradigms are stripped away and it simply becomes about who can impose their beliefs on the other. No, it's not as simple no, as that. No, no, it is. Because what happens is, what happens is, yes. in an atheistic worldview, you have uh, one question, such as abortion, and then atheists come out with different answers to that question. Just like Christians. 
No Christians don't. No. The Christians no, they do. don't. Oh, yeah, they no, do. no, 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 yeah, no. Yes, no, hold on. Yep. Hold on one second. Christians that argue in favor of abortion are arguing against their own faith. Exactly. That's exactly and what that's you would say. And they would probably say the, the same the about you. That's the difference. And of course, but, the communists but and an the Nazis said rude but things about each other, and you too will. But, 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 but here's the difference an atheist could never make the objection that I've just made because you have no objective standard to appeal to, to say you're arguing against the principles of atheism. But I can argue you're yeah. arguing against the principles of Christianity. And that means and that's that when you different. get it wrong, it's even worse because you have a religious conviction behind you, which spurs you on to do more of the evil particular thing that you did at the time. For example, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, if that was the few atheists debating it, they might say, oh, well, she's okay, you know, leave her alone. No, it's in the book. You've got to kill them. So let's let's just look at that. Let's just yeah. look at that. Because you've raised up a couple of examples from the Old Testament. Mm, but let us just remember yeah. that the 20th century yeah. has been the bloodiest century in human history. Exactly. And it has been atheistic ideologies that Thank have dominated you. throughout. Through abortion, through the gulags of the Soviet communists, and through... The, the death camps of the Nazis. More people have been killed, such as Pol Pot, 100 million through communism. And these are intrinsically atheistic ideas. So the idea that having religion makes it more potent because you have conviction is a, a, a red herring argument. Because communists had conviction when they killed 100 million people. The Nazis had conviction when they killed more than 6 million people. The liberals have conviction when they abort children in the death clinics that are dotted across the Western world. So, in terms of the Old Testament examples that you gave, you are talking to a Christian. Yeah. A Christian believes that the Old Testament captures the Old Covenant. Christians believe that Christ inaugurates a new covenant. And those, that new covenant means that those examples you speak of in the past, we do not apply. Oh, but you believe so they were right to have applied them faith. at the time? Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes, thank you. At the time. Right, fine. Now, also, if you talk about all these millions of people who died in the 20th century, and this was more than ever before, my reply to that is, first of all, there's more people in the 20th century than there ever was before. So if you had a dictator, or a supposing uh, Peter the Great was as bad as Stalin, well, he couldn't have killed as many people because there wasn't as many people in Russia at the time. So that's part of the reason why the, there's a bit of a fallacy slipping in here. Uh, also, this, uh, this killing uh, was, as, uh, you know, for example, okay, let's take say, the, the Thirty Years' War. How many people died in that? I, I don't know. No, I don't know. But I know that Germany was reduced to half its population. How many people died under Genghis Khan? We don't know. So we don't Genghis know. Genghis Khan wasn't a Christian. Oh, no, yes, he was. No, no, no. I'm not suggesting he was. He wasn't a Christian, but he was a religious man. So, so your argument is essentially people die? No, my war. argument is that people who believe in God kill other people. And, and people who don't believe on. in God kill other people. So and it's, you're, it's not an argument then against religion, is it? If you're saying essentially it makes no difference whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, and you still kill people, that isn't an argument against believing in God. No, no, and you can believe in God if you like, and we can have nice so debates like this at the, the point. point is, but if you start getting messages from God that you have to kill people, point and some of them just, do, then it becomes rather you've nasty. You've just killed your own argument. You've just killed your own argument. Because essentially you've said it makes no difference. I agree with you, it makes no difference. Why doesn't it make a difference? Because human sin exists in the heart, and the scriptures talk about that reality. It talks about the reality of human sin. It identifies that the human heart is selfish and corrupted and self-gratifying um, self and self-serving. And it speaks to that truth as being the flaw in mankind. Now, to define what is true, it is that description that most closely matches reality. Yes. So in this regard, the Christian faith is true because it describes the corruption of the human heart, to wit, there is huge amounts of evidence that the human heart is selfish, is self-serving, is self-absorbed, is, is self-seeking. But how does it address that point? It addresses that point that you need to recenter yourself, not on the self, not on the me, not on the I, but on the I am, and the love that he is, that 
flows through you into others. And ubi caritos et amor Deus CBS is what we say. Where there is love, there yeah. is God. Yeah. So we recenter ourselves not on the natural selfishness of human yeah. nature, but towards a selflessness. Now, ask me, answer me. Do you think that that is a good thing to do? Not necessarily. It depends how they define their term. You yourself have just said, uh, okay, so we're agreeing there's no difference in some ways between Christianity and, and non-Christianity. There are versions of even of Christianity and certainly of other religions that are absolutely appalling. That is about the worst thing that anybody could do. So no, I don't think that it's a great success. I don't think that it's got any grasp at all about human psychology. It is absolutely devoted to sin and you're horrible and uh, original sin and more sin uh, you all deserve to go to hell what about the good side I, I, of I, 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 I don't think it I think it's probably been a long time since you've hung around with Christians because about when last I, week actually, I, I, yeah, I, last I week. hang around with plenty of Christians <laughs> and one thing that I don't hear them is going yeah. around saying you're horrible you're yeah. a sinner that yeah. is not what I hear when I meet with Christians well, it's, a, meet it's, a straw Christians. Man. it's a straw man no it's not a straw it's man it's just that you're not well educated maybe 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 if you maybe if you hang out with Christians who are saying that you need to find other Christians because <laughs> I, I would like to meet the Christians that you know that are doing that because I would wonder if these people actually exist or whether you've really? just created really? have you ever met St Augustine sorry one second I didn't interrupt you I would be interested to see if these Christians you talk about actually exist and I'd like you to, to introduce me to them because I think you've just created a straw man I really do you put your head right on the ball that's fine I'm quite happy to put it there so now in terms of in terms of the argument right Christianity recenters us on a selfless love and it defines that love as being a sacrificial action that you do for the benefit of others yeah now criticize that way of living for me. Tell me why that is not a good way to live. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Christians. Have you ever heard of a man called St. Augustine? I am a Christian. Yes, yeah, but you don't <laughs> seem to know much about them. I, I mean, know there's about a the lot of them God. around, so you can be in a little group and not yeah. know them. I know Have about you ever Saint heard Augustine. of St. Augustine? Yes, Saint Augustine. I know St. Augustine. Do you know what he said about sin? Yeah. What did he say about it? He talked about the original sin and the full depravity of man. He talked about that and he went on and on and on, didn't he, about his pears that he stole and how this was terrible. Yeah. And he'd done a lot of other things in his life, but he picks on something that's bad and yeah. this is really evil and he, would you agree that he was a bit off center about these views so the, the book that he's that. quoting and it was well, actually apples not pears naturally it's pears not apples oh, well, well, it, it, I reckon it's apples not and pears, it's and, pears and, not and it's in the confessions of St Augustine a book that I've read from that's from right yeah so you should have remembered yeah. it but maybe so, it's a mistranslation but, but, he's, but he's talking about the depravity of human sin is actually that's found right. in his other works that's particularly the city of God uh, so, so, uh, and, 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 and that's the writing of St. Augustine because, and, and that's where the, the, the idea of the depravity of original sin is talked about. Now, in terms of what he is teaching, I, I don't have any problem with it. I agree that human beings cannot reach God from their own effort. That is what I believe. And I see countless examples that human nature is bent inward to itself. So you as so a I Christian, think that that is a de accurate description you as of a reality. Christian, don't believe that humanity is sort of in the middle, a bit good, a bit bad, but it balances out. You believe there's a great big sort of steer over towards sin, evil, wicked. I, 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 I think that, that man yes. cannot reach God by their own effort. Well, that wasn't quite what I asked, so shall I ask it again? Yeah, or will so, you just answer it? Except that your question needs to be unpacked a little because you're asking me as a Christian, so yeah. you're asking about my worldview. And my worldview is yeah. not that we just exist on this horizontal plane yes. in which there are questions yeah. of good yeah. and evil, yes. but there is also a lateral plane that we exist on yes. in yes. terms of our relationship to God. Yes. And questions about original sin mm. primarily are about how we can reach God. And you believe that we can't do it on our own. Correct. Exactly. Thank you. Because we are tilted over towards sin. We're more bad than we are good. I, I don't think it's these kind of measurements. But heaven's for the good place, people. Well, uh, hell's for the bad place. We're somewhere in the middle, so well, we I might mean, get in. So, so deal with my actual position. My position is that human nature <laughs> is inherently selfish, self-seeking and self-serving. That's right. Not that it's inherent. Do you, do you disagree? Yeah, you, you've got half of it. But you forgot you the disagree. other half. I've got, I disagree that that's the full explanation. I'm saying you've got what, half of it right. What, the, the other answer? half of it is that he's altruistic, brave, courageous, loving, and all those other things that the Christians tend to forget because they can't have humans having it. That have to be gifts from God. And that's where they get it all wrong. Well, uh, and your evidence for this is what? 
powerful the evidence is that around you, you know, people who are not Christians. No, hold on. Your, yes. your evidence that the this grace of courage yeah. and altruism does yeah. not come from God. Where is your where is your support for that assertion? Well, because there's no evidence that it comes from God. Ah, right. Some of the so people it's who an do assertion. It, well, no, if you haven't got any evidence for it, it's an assertion. No, if if you haven't got any evidence. Okay, if you haven't got any evidence for all this evil stuff uh, being in us, then I would say it was an assertion, but I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that these things happen. I mean, perhaps even you agree that these things happen. There is uh, courage and love and those yes, sorts of things. Yes, yes, yes. And absolutely. people sometimes do this who are not even Christians. Yeah, yeah, totally. Fine, fine. That, so your assertion is that it comes from God. Yes. My assertion is that it doesn't. Yes. Right. It is a metaphysical question, which means that neither yeah. of us can deposit ah. physical evidence. No, it does mean fight. something because it's not as simple as that. Because in a situation like this, you are bringing an, an extra to facts to, into the, the the argument. Is there you're a problem bringing, with that? You're bringing. Yeah, you You know the, the idea of when you argue, the uh, the best arguments are the ones that use the least number of assumptions. You are adding another assumption. You're bringing God, a really big one as well. Well, I think actually the, the, the reverse of that is the denial of God's existence is also a huge assumption. No, if I deny the existence of... Uh, On what basis? Well, if I deny, for example, the existence of space aliens, and you insist that there are space aliens, it's for me to say to you, well, you know, produce the evidence for a space alien, not for you to say to me, produce the evidence that there isn't one. But you're making a statement about the nature of reality. Yes, yes. Right? And that yes. statement about the nature of reality is based upon premises that you yourself, I think, when tested, will find out inconsistent. Because mm -hmm. essentially what you've just said is, before I should believe in something, I have yeah. to have evidence. Is that correct? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I really yeah. go for that, yeah. That, that's his argument. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, fine. Okay, can you tell me who proved that principle to you? When did they prove it and what evidence did they use to do so? The evidence that they used to do so is a utilitarian argument because it is the... An argument? It's an argument, yes. A philosophy? Philosophy, yes. So no, 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 my question. If you're just going to move your assumption back, what I want you to prove is your assumption. Because your assumption is that you can't believe in something without evidence. Yes. So prove to me no, that no, no, principle. No, 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 the... <laughs> The assumption is that you shouldn't believe in things without evidence. Oh, they do it all the time. I'm not saying it's impossible. I would say that you were a splendid example of it. Uh, so there's, we, we, we have a system of reasoning and we have rules for that game. And one of those rules is that if you bring in assumptions without good cause, when you could explain the thing Occam's just as easily razor. without it, Occam's razor, yeah, that is a bad argument. Now, if you want to, you can say, but I don't subscribe to that club. No, no, I'm not going to subscribe to that club. So we'll see where it leads, and we'll see where it leads straight into chaos, because anybody can start believing in yeah, anything I, I, and say, I'm no, sorry. I don't have to have any With, with respect, uh, with yeah, respect, yeah. I, I asked you a very simple question. You said that you have this principle, that you yes. should not believe in something without evidence. Yes, that's right. So, yes. show me where is the evidence that proves this principle. No, 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 you've not quite understood. No, I really have. No, oh, okay, Thank imagine, God. imagine, say, the American legal system, and you have constitutional laws, no, and no. you have laws that are then devolved from that. This is like one of the constitutional laws. It's one of the ground rules, if you like, if that makes it easier for you. So you're, what you're saying is your principle is an unproven assumption. Oh, you can't prove it. No, I'm not suggesting for one moment that there you, you prove it. What I suggest, which is what I said at the beginning. Which, I it said, would be an unproven oh, assumption. What I said at the beginning was that this is one of those. I said it went to utility. You remember using utilitarianism in this? Right. Well, let's bring in utilitarianism yeah, because then. I said that it was much easier to get somewhere if you do this. If you assume that that you you won't bring in all sorts of so, weird. So let's assumptions. let's just deal with the utilitarian prism, because what you've done is you've accepted that you're working from an unprovable assumption, and I. I that is as unproven in, 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 yeah. meta, in physical terms as belief in God. So we're even on that sense. But then you said, ah, but look at the utility of this principle. Exactly, yes. Right, hold on, one second. Yes, fine, yes. But what you've missed is, yeah, is, is, I think it's um, Copper's critique of positivism, which is this idea mm. that, that, that reason is boundless. Because the fact of the utility of the scientific method yes. is contained within a prism. It only works within physical constructs. It does not have any interpretive power to questions of metaphysics. And therefore, therefore, it cannot be used as an argument for or against, strongly, the existence of God. 
You're not talking science when you deny God's existence, you're talking philosophy. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm very happy with that. What I would say, again, it's utilitarianism. But you're so hiding let's it behind get, No, I'm not hiding behind it. You've just challenged me on this. I've said, yeah, that's yeah. how it is, so it's not hiding. What I say is, let's take two groups of philosophers, or scientists, or both, and let one play by the rules that, uh, of Occam's razor, and let the other group play by Copper's critique of purity, uh, positivism. No, Copper critique. Yes, that's it. Copper's it, it, critique positivism. of positivism. That's yeah. right. That's what I said. Those, those two things, the, the positions you're setting up are not exclusive to one another. No, we're not suggesting they are. Okay, fair. No, no. Uh, but one is one and one is the other. And so what I'm suggesting is let us set up discussion groups, one based on one and one based on the other. Now, on the, the first one, the one that follows Occam's razor, you would have people straining to bring forward evidence to justify this assumption and so on and so forth. In the other one, it would be like a, a, a chimp's tea party because anybody could say, oh, well, no, but I mean, there is the fact about that seven-legged wombat and they'd say, well, what seven-legged wombat? And they'd say, well, I believe it. No, I think, I think you've misrepresented both Occam's razor yeah. and Cole Parker's critique, yeah, yeah. critique of positivism. But here's, here, I, I want to I yeah. actually present to you Yes. A, a good reason why you why there is good reason to believe in God. Yeah. Okay. Oh, please. please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, wait so yeah. I studied physics at university. Okay. Right. Yeah. And as I'm sure you know, in terms of the physical world, mm -hmm. we are able to describe it through mathematics. Hopefully we can. No, we do. No, Not some hopefully. Of, no, some no, we of, do describe the world through mathematics. All right, the, the, this trick is to just keep telling me the same thing you said and not let me reply. Well, let me finish my point. Okay, so physicists use maths to describe the world in theories. And then those theories, because of the rudiments of the maths, then go on to predict other things, which we can then verify through the process of falsification. Okay? Now that process of falsification sometimes disproves theories and, and sometimes it proves them. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. exactly. But the fact of the matter is that the very fact that those mathematical formulae have predictive power means that through human cognition we are tapping into a code that is deeply rooted into the structures of the universe. Now I would ask you, Firstly, have you ever found a code that didn't have a code giver? And have you ever found a structure that didn't have a designer? When you talk about a code, you are already assuming that it does have a designer. So that is simply collapses into, uh, you know, saying the same thing twice. No, right, so I'll, I'll rephrase and the argument. And the designer and the designer does the same thing. No, no, no. It's no, all no. when you've got the answer in the question. No, you're, 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 you're dodging around the implications. No, no, I don't know what the implications so are, and I'm very ready to meet them. So, but so deal we'll with sort the this one out so, first. So deal with the implication mm -hmm. that what we have is, is a, a code that is tapping into the structure of the universe. Have you ever encountered a code that's the question. Have yeah. you ever encountered a code that does not have a code giver? And have you ever encountered a structure that does not have a design? Right. The first one, no, of course I haven't. Because a code is something which an intelligent person makes up. So, of course, you've got the answer in the question. Well done, but it gets you nowhere. The other one, the structure, oh, yeah, the structures in things that don't seem to have any structure given. Go to, to uh, Giant's Causeway and look at the structure of the, uh, the rocks. No, no, I would say that that has a designer. Oh, no, you would. Yeah. But you can't get to the designer just by showing me the well, rocks that are shaped no, in a way. Well, firstly, firstly, on the issue of the code, yes. on the issue of a code, yes. you have a good foundation there for believing in a designer. Because a code is by its nature given by intelligence. Of course it is. That's why I'm right. saying it's a circular thing. No, You're no, asking no. a question that but, the answer is already. What, what, what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you is that through the study of the natural world mm. and our mathematical descriptions of that mathematical world, yes. we have tapped into a pre-existent code. That's what you believe. Yes. That, that way, it's, it's, it's obvious. No, it's not obvious. It's the not. reason why it's obvious is because once we tap into this code, we're mm. actually able to predict things mm. that only much later are we verifying through scientific experiment. Such as the Higgs boson. Presumably, you know that it is possible to make a good prediction and your theory be to be completely wrong. Um, if you've got your maths wrong, yeah. No, not if you've got your maths wrong. You've got some of your fundamental principles wrong. For example, yeah, 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 yeah. For example you know, in the... But in uh, physics, it's all described with maths. Yeah. In the uh, Ptolemaic system, 
you know the Earth's the centre of the planets go around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You could predict eclipses. Not perfectly, but not bad. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Bad. yeah. Better yeah. than you could under Copernicus. I'm going to have to go in three minutes. All oh, right. Okay. Better than you could under Copernicus, but that didn't mean the Ptolemaic system was right. Now I think. Uh, and I'm not just making this up now because I'm arguing with you, but I really do think all the time that what we've got to in uh, astrophysics is something like the end of the Ptolemaic system, where it's having to be propped up with deference and epicycles and also and they're putting in more and more assumptions. So you've got dark matter to explain uh, why the universe hasn't crunched. Then you have to bring in dark energy to uh, explain away some of the factors of that. And there's no evidence for any of these. Well, the Platonic, the, the, I think it's actually the Aristotelian system of the helocentric Earth, the helocentric solar system, and that was that was crushed by Copernicus and then by Galileo. He so, was told so, so, it. so, so, but, but, I, but you're right in saying that when you get your starting assumptions wrong, your your uh, uh, predictions can be wrong. But the thing is, it's all, but it, it's all described with mathematics. And the, one second, one second. And the fact is that mathematics, it, it is a code. It is literally a code. That Center. we, that it, but That's it is. Your faith. That's it your is. Faith. No, no, no. This That's is physics. This no, it's is not, physics. It's not physics. It's they are describing it's, it's, the. Pra it's they are Christians describing. Another philosopher. They are describing the movements. Yeah, yeah. They are describing processes. Mm. They are describing structures with mathematics. Mm. Mathematics is a human language. The fact that that use of the human language, we are able to make predictions mm. of what that world will do next indicates that the world is working by a code that we have tapped into and a code has intelligence so why is astrophysics in such a mess it's not oh uh i think it's they're struggling with the grand unifying theory oh There's they're nothing... they've been struggling with that for a long time but they seem to be losing the grand unifying theory seems to be beating them on this not at and all they haven't managed to crack it up since the time of einstein uh, Einstein, of course, I've got said no that flag to fight for for science as being the supreme form of knowledge because I don't believe it is. Okay, good, good, good. But well, I have to go. I, I understand that. Okay. So it was nice talking. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Wrap up, wrap up. So, guys, in in our discussions, um, we've seen the Muslim Dawa guy who was butt hurt from the week before come back to want to talk about uh, hadith literature again, and then once again, the moment we start quoting that hadith literature to him, even though it's Sahih. Even though it's Hassan, he wants to say it's weak. Now, weak is Daif, but the ones that I quoted were not Daif. They were ha Sahi and Hassan. And what that indicates is that Muslims have no agreement upon the reliability of their hadiths. And they need those hadiths to interpret the Quran, which means the whole system of Islam just starts to collapse. And the fact that they are embarrassed by their prophet and they don't want to defend him, they just want to get off the topic, indicates that in their soul, their emotional intelligence is telling them that Muhammad's an embarrassment. And if your prophet is an embarrassment to you, stop following him, follow someone better, because you won't find any Christians embarrassed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we had uh, uh, um, an atheist guy who wanted to throw out the normal poppycosh and when challenged, walked away. Um, and, and, and atheistic logic is by its nature arbitrary. It doesn't, I'm not arguing that Christians don't agree or that religions don't agree amongst one another. But what I'm saying is that in a world where God exists, you have a moral paradigm, you have a common language that you can use to negotiate the moral questions. In a world without God, all you have is your assertion and your ability to impose it upon others because there is no commonality. It is you say this and I say this. And if we disagree strongly enough, there isn't something that we can appeal to to settle our differences, we just have to fight it out. And that is an arbitrary view of the world. And finally, for those of you that are atheists like the ones that I've spoken to, I want you to address this question and deal with this question. Mathemat the physics, uh, the, the study of the physical universe uses mathematics to describe that physical universe. Those mathematic formulae make predictions about what the world will do next. And both of that predates our invention of maths, because maths is a human language. Which means that that human language has tapped into a code that shows the structures of the cosmos. And when have you ever had a code without a code giver? When have you ever had a structure without a designer? There are sufficient reasons to have belief in God. Oh, and incidentally, the science, even though Genesis is not a science 
textbook and should not be read as a science textbook, its science is still superior to that found in the Quran.